Okay, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh and uh, very good morning. Okay, we start with Umar Kitab Al-Fatihah. <coughs> Alright, so um, today we will focus on uh, the last subtopic of the chapter 5. Okay, um, and um, somehow we have learned so far about the post sequence characteristics such as um, the AGB, the horizontal branch and also the red giant. Yeah, uh, so I hope that um, all of you know um, what is inside the course. So the important thing is that um, to differentiate between uh, such categories is uh, what is inside the core. And uh, we also should know um, what are the um, chemical compositions, yeah inside the surrounding such as the envelope and also the shell okay and then uh, the process how times it takes time for the process yeah, to become the next stage and uh, what is inside um, and also um, in terms of the evolution of each categories okay so this is very important in terms of um, to understand um, the criteria of um, for horizontal branch for example yeah okay so um not to forget yeah uh, what is the interesting part of each category maybe some of them has the shell burnings yeah uh, helium shell burning and others so you need to know uh, each criteria and each characteristic for uh, each stage okay all right so we move on um to another important things also all right about uh, nuclear reactions and uh, uh, this is actually the fundamental <coughs> to understand okay uh, what is inside the core of the stars yeah? and uh, we do have uh, a certain nuclear reactions such as the proton proton change yeah? uh, the cyano cycles and also the triple alpha process okay so we can see here yeah the log e which means that uh, the log of energy versus with the temperature and in this case it do have three categories here the first one is a uh, proton proton chain and the second one is the CNO cycle. The third one is the triple alpha process. So this kind of process is actually we convert from the um, certain chemical compositions to um, helium. Okay. So for example, we can see protopotential here is start with the hydrogens. Yeah. Same with the triple alpha, but they do have the difference between it. Okay. Uh, we can see in terms of the temperature. Yeah. We can see that. For the case of protopotent chain, it just needs a small temperature compared to the triple alpha process. And in the intermediate, yeah, we do have the intermediate process where we call it as a CNO cycle. And this uh, CNO cycle is represent the carbon, nitrogen, and also oxygen. Yeah, before it convert from the um, this kind of chemical elements to the helium. Okay. And we can see that it do have the moderate uh, temperature, which is about um, roughly uh, 12, yeah, 10 power of 6 Kelvin, right? Um, and for the case of triple alpha process, it need really, really high temperature, uh, almost exact to 100 uh, K uh, times 10 power of Kelvin, okay? All right, okay. So this is the things that we need to understand. Okay. All right. So um, if you look through um, this process, yeah, we can have um, that. Uh, it also have the high in terms of energy, such as the CNO cycle. So in this case, we can have uh, the CNO cycle. And um, we can see the um, the pattern of the graph yeah, to show the difference between the PP, uh, PP change or protoporting change and also the triple alpha process. It's quite drastic yeah, in terms of triple alpha process and also in terms of the CNO cycle. Okay, so um, if you look through the, the PP change here, okay, um, we can see that it starts with hydrogen, right? So this is the schematic diagram of the protoporting chain. And it start with hydrogens, um, and also it will also form the positron together with the neutrinos and also the gamma rays. Okay, before it forms the helium. Yeah, so we know that um, this is actually 
the stage where um, the mis sequence comes to become the post mis sequence. Yeah. So um, as long as the core is um, have the hydrogen elements, so it's actually um, at the stage of the post mis uh, sorry the mis sequence. But somehow once the core become to the um, the helium um, the elements, so it will be a post mis sequence um, stage. Okay. So we do have certain um, elements here such as proton, yeah, neutron, positron, and also neutrinos, and not to forget the uh, gamma um, photons, yeah. So we can have um, the uh, evolution of the potential here, okay. And um, somehow, right, so this is actually the um, general idea to show the uh, um, the equations of the protopotent change. Yeah? So we do have a two combination of hydrogens that will combine to form two hydrogen plus the positron with the neutrinos. And then the two hydrogen plus one hydrogen will form the three helium plus gamma. So in this case, what happened is the helium is not actually stable. Okay, Therefore, it will form um, together with the another helium to, uh, to, to uh, generate the helium-4 plus one hydrogen and also one hydrogen, another one hydrogen. So we can have a quite stable uh, formation of the helium plus uh, two hydrogen in this case. And uh, a net result which shows that it will form the uh, helium plus two positron plus two neutrinos and also plus two gamma rays. So um, we can have um, this kind of the, sorry, uh, we have plus two photons here. Yeah? So we can have um, the um, stable um, conditions in terms of the potential change at the, the uh, final uh, equations here. And it occurs about 69% uh, yeah, of the time and actually it depends, it really depends on the temperature and also based on the uh, surrounding of the stars. Okay, So we can have the reaction rate that is, is proportional to t power of 4 um, times with the density plus s factor. Okay, so um, together with this kind of things also, we do also have um, the protopotent change too. So actually, we do have three different types of protopotent chain, which is considered as 1, 2, and 3. So this is the difference between protopotent change 1 and 2, whereas actually at the beginning, it also have two hydrogen. But somehow in this case, okay, it will form also two hydrogen plus positron, plus um, uh, neutrinos, but somehow it will react to the another hydrogen or two hydrogens to form the three helium plus gamma. Okay, so plus um, this is a uh, photons. Yeah? So in this case, it will uh, plus with the photons and then it will react together with another helium yeah, to form the beryllium. So this is the difference between uh, potential change one and two. Okay. So others it will have the same elements like um protoproton change one, but somehow it just it will form another few elements such as beryllium and also the lithium to form the helium plus um uh, four helium plus for another four heliums. Yeah? So basically it occurs about 31% of the time and uh, we can have um uh um Different kind of the potential change here. It will also take time, and also it also depends on the temperature. Okay, so um, this is about potential change three. Okay, so it also have the same stage like potential change one at the first stage, but somehow it will form the another beryllium's and uh, elements of boron here, yeah, which is not in potential change two plus um, with the neutrinos to form another helium plus helium. Okay, so this is quite stable. Yeah? In, at the stage of the final stage, we can have um, four helium plus four helium. And in this case, um, if you look through here, all right, so this is um, also looks like potential change two, but somehow if we revise again in potential change one, we just have only one helium compared to two heliums for the case of potential change two and also the case of the potential change three. Okay, so not to forget. So, uh, if you look to the schematic diagram, 
it do have a several elements. So this case is actually for the case of portable potent chain one. Okay, so it will form the uh, photons, neutrinos, and, and uh, so on. Okay, the neutrons and so on. But somehow, um, also do have the neutrinos element, also the uh, also have uh, the photons element, but um, it will be more um, heavier elements in terms of photo photon change 2 and also photo photon change 3. But somehow in the case of um, reactions, yeah, this is only occurs about 0.3% of the time. So not many uh, stars will um, up to this stage. Yeah? And of course, it needs um, a high temperature also. And also, we can see how does it will form the beryllium the boron. Yeah? So it's uh, stage by stage. So it means that it will be up um, a heavy element yeah? before it forms again the, the uh, helium and so on. Okay? Right, so um, that is about uh, protoproton change. Yeah, so uh, now we move on to the uh, CNO cycle. And um, if you look to the schematic diagram, this is very important for us yeah, um, to understand the schematic diagram of protoproton change and also the CNO cycle. Yeah, because uh, from there we can see the behavior of the combinations and also the reactions of the evolutions. So, um, if you look through the first stage, yeah, we also still have the hydrogen, but somehow it will react um, with a carbon, okay? And also um, another element such as the nitrogen before it forms the helium. So it, we, if you remember the first schematic diagram about the temperature, so we can have the moderate temperature, yeah, 10 to 15 power of 6 Kelvin, and um, of course, during this stage, it will also form another element such as nitrogen and so on. Yeah, it's not just only the elements of um, hydrogen and helium also. Okay, so we can see um, a start of the carbons there, all right, a formation of carbons there. And this carbon trap will act as the nuclear catalyst. Yes, yeah? so um, it's very important. And we can see that um, this kind of carbon is actually do have a quite High, high percentage inside inside the stars is, um, instead of the hydrogen itself okay and it also forms the photons yeah it also forms um, the neutrinos and so on and okay? the positrons and uh, seems like a proton proton change um, but somehow in, it just have a few elements that are heavier than the hydrogen so let's see um the another schematic diagrams to show uh, this kind of the relative energy rate um, and we can see that for the case of the phototon chain it's quite stable yeah it's not very extreme in terms of the drastically increasing of the relative energy um, but somehow for the case of CNO cycle um, we can see a uh, quite extreme compared to PP and uh, PP chain and um, if the case of the epsilon um, PP chain is t power of 4, but somehow for the case of energy rate, um, the t is equals to 10 power of 17. Yeah? So we can see that um, the energy rate compared to the core temperatures is quite high. Yeah? Power of 4 to power of 17 um, in the case of PP change and also in the case of the CNO cycle. So um, uh, this is very important for us to understand. And um, let's see the equations for this in the cycle. And um, since um, you do have the catalyst, which is carbon, this will react with the hydrogen to form the um, the nitrogens, yeah, and also the photons. Yeah? So we can have this kind of um, equation first. And then this nitrogen is actually not stable. But somehow it also form the, the 13 carbons plus with positron and also plus with um, neutrinos, okay? And it will react with another hydrogens to form a quite stable of the nitrogens because we know that um, the nitrogen is actually have the numbers of 14 and this is also together with the uh, photons, yeah? So it will form the energy of photons together with the nitrogen. So this is the case of the stable conditions. Um, but it's not just stop there. It will... Uh, Combine again with the um, hydrogen, another one hydrogen to form the 15 oxygen plus 
um, press with the um, radiation of the photons. And again, we know that 15 oxygen is not stable yeah, uh, because we know that oxygen is, should, should be 16. Yeah? And uh, in terms of number of atoms, so we can have, um, it will form another 15 nitrogen yeah, plus with the positron and also neutrinos. So um, one thing that you should understand that the positron will combine together with the neutrinos. Yeah when the the condition is not stable so um and if it is the quite stable stage usually it will form the um, photons yeah photons radiations then this uh, nitrogen will uh, combine together with the hydrogen another hydrogen to form a complete and a stable of the 12 uh, carbon 12 together with the um, hydrogen eh, sorry the helium yeah so we do have four helium and uh, this is the final stage of the CNO cycle. Okay, so still uh, we um, form from the hydrogen to the helium, but the process yeah and also the elements um uh, should be a lot yeah in this case yeah it's not too direct because we have the stage of the nitrogen we have the stage of carbon nitrogen and also oxygen that's why it calls as a CNO cycle, and uh, this is actually a very extreme process and it's very sensitive to the temperature okay right so um this is about cyanocycle. cycle okay and this is the third process which is the triple alpha process and uh, since we know that it takes a very high temperature compared to the both process before <coughs> so um, we can see that it's quite extreme okay um, logically it's quite extreme and uh, this is actually a chain of the nuclear reactions, which is also known as a salpeter process. Okay, so please remember and please take note that it's not just called as a triple alpha process, but also a salpeter process based on the astrophysicist name at Edwin Salpeter, and uh, who identified this kind of process. And uh, this is also um, the um, process where the helium is converted into carbon. Yeah. And uh, the process is actually produced in uh, high temperature, mainly in red giants and also red supergiants, with the core of temperature reached up to 100 million Kelvin. So, very, very high temperature. Definitely, it's not in terms of the main sequence regions, but somehow it's actually the post main sequence regions, such as the red giants and also the red supergiants. Okay. And um, uh, it also do have the two nuclei of helium. Uh, alpha particles which is called like and fuse and form a nucleus beryllium okay but uh, somehow at the third uh, collisions yeah between um, beryllium and helium um, the carbon is actually will form and uh, we can see that also uh, it also form the oxygen and also the neon yeah so i hope that uh, for this assignment okay um, please uh, take notes the triple alpha process equations because in this slide i didn't give the triple alpha process uh, equations so please take note and how does understand how does the triple alpha process um, form all right inside the supergiant and also the red giant uh, stage okay so um we comes to the the end of the lecture lecture all right for this so this is actually the final topics in the uh, chapter five so uh, with that, um, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you very much.